So what we've got here is a comparison of the Arctic F12 fan, 120 millimeter, six year warranty, versus the Noctua Redo, 120 millimeter fan. Uh, both these fans are claimed to be quiet. Uh, and they're both in the 12 US dollar range and uh, just want to do some real world testing side by side. Now the Arctic fan, uh, you can see that the noise level 0.3 song, that equals anywhere from about 22.5 to 24.5 decibel. We have 90.1 meters cubed per hour for the airflow. And then I looked up the static pressure on it and it's one millimeter uh, of static pressure. Uh, rated at 0.21 amps, 12 volts. Now the Noctua is 120.2 meters cube per hour, uh, acoustic noise of 25.1 decibels, and a much higher static pressure of 2.83. Um, again, 12 volts. And then the amperage is 0.09 amps. So what we're going to be testing with today, 12 volt, one and a half amp power supply, a speed controller in a custom enclosure, and an anemometer. So let's get started. The Arctic F12 is rated at a max 1350 RPM, where the Noctua NF-P12 is rated at 1700 max RPM. And while these are both budget claim to be low noise fans, uh, we're going to see uh, we're going to be looking at noise, vibration, and then airflow. Now the first thing that did come as a surprise to me was despite the difference in the amperage rating uh, between the two, the amount of uh, applied voltage that it took for the fan to actually begin its spin up consistently. Uh, between the two, uh, where you'll see that the Arctic starts almost instantly on the dial. The Noctua needs a quite, quite a bit more power before it begins its spin up at a stable fashion. And right now we've got the Noctua hooked up. So you can see there, I've got the mark for not to own. If I go any less than that, I don't know if you can hear it, you may can see it, the fan goes to surging because it's not getting enough for its initial lowest level spin up. So as far as loudness, what I've noted is that from its minimal spin-up speed all the way to its maximum speed, uh, the perceived decibel doesn't really change much through that. So from its lowest all the way to its highest, it's kind of a consistent noise level.
and I don't have a good way to measure vibration um, but what I can tell you that with having my hand against it uh, there is absolutely zero vibration out of the dock to a fan um, very well balanced uh, no vibrate vibration present in the fan so now I'm going to change it over to the Ar uh, Arctic All right, and you'll see that it begins to come on just immediately so about as low as I can turn it on uh, and if you can look at against the the I guess the spindle shaft or, or against the shaft of the impeller propeller whichever it is on here you can see that you know it's not cut straight so that there's you know some wobble there uh, already you can feel vibration in the fan but at this point it is absolutely dead silent and then as you ramp up through the voltage uh, of course the loudness with this fan increases uh, however I would say that it's top loudness uh, percept perceptibly would be somewhat uh, slightly quieter than the Noctua at its uh, at any of its stages because the Noctua starts at a sound level and stays at it where the Arctic starts out completely silent and then gets louder the faster it spins. Now the Arctic not having as fast a top RPM as the Noctua uh, you know we're doing our best to compare apples to apples here so I'll go through the speed ranges And then about at medium, start to get a great deal of vibration out of the fan. Uh, really wish that this fan was uh, more QC was taken during the, the fan blade uh, manufacturer so that it was a balanced fan. Because uh, with a uh, more balanced fan, it could only improve what it's already doing. And then it wide open uh, where it's its loudest. It's got a good bit of whine to it. Uh, it is not as loud as the Noctua at any of its levels. So let's get some readings on them. All right, to uh, where I've got the centers of the meter and the fan aligned uh, to make sure that we've got equal distance uh, between the two tests. I'm actually using a SSD drive to measure the distance between the two so that we have consistent testing. So we're at our lowest RPM, I'll go ahead and cut the meter on. And the meter is currently set to feet per minute, uh, which is not CFM. Uh, CFM, there's also uh, the volume of the area of air moving through something that has to come into the calculation to actually convert it over to CFM. So we're just going to use the feet per minute uh, at the different stages as an apples apples comparison between the two fans. So you can see that we're steady there at 354. So I'm going to move it up to the low mark. And going to hold the fan in place.
and we see that we've leveled out at 433. So now I'm going to move up to medium. And we've leveled at 472. And we'll go up to high. Which without a tachometer, you know, I can only assume that this is the max speed of the fan. And we've leveled out at 511. So now let's see what we get out of the Noctua fan. Let's take our measuring stick again. And we've got our centers of our fans fairly well aligned. And let's see what we get. So now we expected that the initial starting point on the Noctua to have a higher feet per minute uh, because it takes a higher RPM to get a consistent rotation out of the fan. Alright, looks like we leveled off, leveled off at 452. Moving it up to low. Looks like we've leveled off at 472. Run it up to medium. Didn't seem to really have any effect. I saw it bump to 492 once. Now right, let's go on up to high. It looks like we've leveled off at 492. Well, no. keeps dipping periodically. That must be the amount of um, the step of accuracy within the meter that it jumps from one to the other. So we're going to call that the 492 at wide open, which is at a higher RPM. All right, so again, uh, the knock to a redo 120 uh, is more specific to static pressure uh, use cases. <coughs> so um, you can go Google to see the difference between just uh, airflow versus, you know, having a uh, a targeted scope of uh, focusing on static pressure. So to cover that aspect as well, I'm going to run the uh, anemometer up very close to the fan face, and we'll run tests on both of the fans through its stages with that. So I'm going to go ahead and, this is the knock tool, I'm going to go ahead and power it on.
All right, looks like we've levered our off at 6.49 and we'll bump it up to low. Looks like we're hitting 6.69 and if the microphone is picking it up, the little bit of chatter that you hear, that's actually out of the anemometer meter at these higher speeds. That's not from the fan. medium we're at 708 and then at high looks like we've leveled off at 728 all right we've got the arctic set up get to where it comes on We're hitting 472. Move up to low. Six Like we're leveled off at 708. Alright, looks like we're leveled off at 767. A couple of other things worth noting uh, with the Arctic being on the left and the Noctua being on the right. Uh, the Noctua cable is sleeved uh, where the Arctic is not, uh, so that's a nice addition uh, if that's something that you like. Uh, you'll see that parts of the uh, fan housing uh, I had to actually break out some of the pieces of plastic on the Noctua to be able to do a hard mount for a specific use case that I had. So just be aware if you're doing anything other than the self, uh, let's call it self-tapping screws, the, the typical uh, case fan screws that cut into the plastic and set themselves. If you're using anything other than that to mount your fans um, to get a nice tight connection, uh, just be aware with the Noctua, uh, specifically uh, these uh, Redo series fans, you will have to break some of the plastic out to make room for uh, nuts or other hardware if that's something that you are planning to do with your build. Uh, now with the Arctic fan, due to the vibration that it causes, uh, you want to make sure that whatever method you use, you want to have a nice tight mount on it uh, just to cut down on noise created by the vibration and also uh, mounted into a larger op object, the tighter that you can get the mount on the Arctic uh, will be less vibration distributed through your system uh, versus if it's allowed to rattle and uh, then there's the... Uh, amplitude build on itself and anyway not to get into all that so uh, that's some other differences worth noting on these two fans